vibes cartel case, even though that him alone, you know, it's like it's like when them say SSL thief the money them is no so it's not on go bolt alone money, but because him is the main factor in it. People are always call the vibes cartel case. My viewers and subscriber, I hope you all are doing good. Hope you all are doing great. So as it is, we come across another Muta Baruta content wherein Muta Baruta is interviewing Paula Llewellyn about Vibes Cartel case. So as it is, guys, you want to stay tuned. This one is going to be really, really interesting. Guys, before we get going into the interview, guys, you know it's black unity don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to this channel as it is share with a family so that they can become a part of the movements let's go ahead and hear what Paula Llewellyn has to say about five scartel case mr. Palmer and other persons were convicted of murder at the trial. Then the matter went to the appeal court. They appealed fiction and sentence. And you had many days of arguments between their lawyers and lawyers for the Crown, for the prosecution. At the end of the day... All right, so I could talk about this thing. Um, you know what? I get a press release here, but mm -hmm. the press release... If we just read the press release and don't get it from the lady's mouth, I would be doing injustice to it. So that is why I call you, because I don't want to just read the press release. It's about the, the Privy Council refusal to the ap ap application for leave to argue additional grounds in the case of Sean Campbell, Aliza yeah. Palmer, Kaira Jones, and Andre St. John. Yeah. I want you to really explain to the IRFM listeners is a total different kind of listeners, them. The IRFM okay. listeners. What is this happening here now? Because there's a lot of short things that happen. Say, boy, I'm not going to come out of jail now because they refuse this and refuse that. So you are the best well, person to. Well, the deal thing with. about it is, I'm just, just a humble, um, how should I put it, prosecutor who is going to make an attempt to explain. The thing is, you know that. Mr. Palmer and other persons were convicted of murder at the trial. Then the matter went to the appeal court. They appealed fiction and sentence. And you had many days of arguments between their lawyers and lawyers for the Crown, for the prosecution. At the end of the day, the judges um, upheld the conviction and sentence. However, there were arguments in law where their lawyers sought to persuade the Court of Appeal to allow, give them what we call leave to appeal to the Privy Council in England. The Privy Council, according to our structure, legal structure, is still the highest appellate body for Jamaica. So the Court of Appeal in Jamaica did mount and allowed them to appeal to the Privy Council. Now, along the way, while the matter is there waiting to be heard in England, before the Privy Council is there, the lawyers in England and here certain grounds and allowed them to appeal to the Privy Council. Now, along the way, while the matter is there waiting to be heard in England, before the Privy Council is there, the lawyers in England and here for Mr. Palmer and the other accused asked permission of the court in Jamaica for the cell phone, which is at the heart of the Crown's case, the cell phone 
belonging Mr. Palmer to Mr. Palmer to be examined by their expert. The court here granted that permission on the condition that the cell phone is to be examined in the presence of the expert, the cyber expert, prosecution. So they were able to examine the phone. So what they did is sought leave from the Privy Council and they did this in writing. So at the Privy Council, at the Court of Appeal here too, you have to submit written submissions. Then the Privy Council now will decide whether they need to hear from you. So written submissions were submitted by Mr. Palmer's lawyers as well as the lawyers in England for the Crown to do what we call adduce fresh evidence. That is fresh evidence from the expert, their expert who examined the phone. And also they decided to seek permission of the Privy Council to advance or to argue additional grounds that they didn't argue in the Court of Appeal in Jamaica as part of their application for leave, permission, to go to the Privy Council. So, detailed submissions were submitted by the um, lawyers for the appellants, as Mr. Palmer and the others, as well as lawyers for the Crown, and we have English um, barristers as well in England acting for the Crown. And so the Privy Council, having considered the written submissions, decided to refuse the application for leave to adduce the fresh evidence, that is the evidence that they wanted to bring before the Privy Council to try to establish that there was some improper interference with the cellular phone of Mr. Palmer while it was in the custody of the police. So they refused permission to do that, and they also refused permission for his lawyers to advance additional grounds of appeal in respect of which permission had not been previously granted by the Court of Appeal in Jamaica. So with that, there remains the substantial appeal against conviction and sentence, which will be heard by the Privy Council at an appointed date. All right, so I'm going to ask you a question. The, this, this thing around the cell phone was what? Adija Palmer lawyers was 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 wa wanted to 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 advance in the court had the pass that already in the local court. The right. local court did already throw it down. No, no. So what happened? Remember, the prosecution centered a lot of its case on the contents of, of the, the cell phone, phone the voice yes. notes, and that sort of thing. Yes. So at the Privy Council. I mean, this thing has gone now. It has gone through court of appeal. And yeah. at the Privy Council, his lawyers now wanted permission to adduce what we call in law fresh evidence. So whatever the expert found and has put in a report, they wanted to be able to call the expert who would swear on the Bible or affirm as the case yeah. may be and give that evidence. To the privy okay. council up there, or so the, put put the written report before them. So that is what they refused, as so well the, as additional grounds that they had formulated. So you know, you, you have any idea what the new evidence would be or could be? Well, what would happen, you know, is that written submissions. Perhaps it would be what the expert found, but written submissions of this would be put before the. Um, the, the, the Privy Council and the yeah. reason why it is it was not available at the time of the trial because okay. there, there's a concept in law called fresh evidence also at the appellate court in Jamaica so
So for it to be able to pass muster, it would have to have not been available at the time of the trial. And it would have to be credible, um, basically. So it is for the Privy Council, having looked at the written submission, to decide as a matter of law whether it um, they could give that permission as a matter of law. But I remember, you know, Mr. B- Muta Baruka, when we're dealing with law, some people think that the law can be an act, but when you're dealing with law, it's an objective situation. It's not about how you feel or whether the person who is appealing is popular. It's about what the case law that has been decided over the years, what right. it has to say on the point, and the material that the, the, the lawyer, whether for the Crown or for the defense, is going to put before the Privy Council to say, this is why, and this is the case law that supports that. All right, so what they looked at all the written submissions and they refused what those they, um, applications. What Adija Palmer lawyers are asking for, is there a precedence to that that they could bring to the, the Privy Council or the court down here? Well, the, if, if you're looking at the concept of fresh evidence, it's a concept known to law. The concept of fresh evidence. It's a concept, well-known concept known to law. But the thing is, whether the material or what they're seeking to advance as the reason why they didn't put it forward before yeah. or of what import it's going to be in the scheme of things. It's whether, as far as the judges are concerned, it is justified by the case law or whether the case law can decide it to justify them. If yeah, they yeah. don't find that the case law, the objective case law, and the material presented, that it, it match, then they are not going to allow you. Okay. It happened so what, here, what, it has happened here in Jamaica. In the so what we're up now? What we're up now? No, that well, is what happening. happens, they having refused these applications, the main substantive appeal now against conviction and sentence will be heard by the Privy Council at a date that they will set. You understand? So it's a yeah. substantive appeal now where they are saying, based on this evidence, based on this particular ground of appeal that we are advancing, we should not have been convicted and we should not have, and therefore the sentence should be set aside. So okay. what they want is for the conviction to be quashed and the sentence set aside. But when you are in the appeal court, it's not a trial of the case all over again. Okay. Right? Like when the jury, when the jury sit and hear the evidence and hear the witnesses give the testimony and hear your cross-examination, that is not what happens on appeal. On appeal, it's all about the law. Right? So you, have, you will have about, what, about five judges um, at the Privy Council who will sit and listen to arguments in law looking at you the have, circumstances of the, the evidence that was put forward, but arguments only in law would be made by the attorneys, the lawyers for both sides, both for the appellant and for the Crown. And so is there, side. is there any time, I mean, time granted this thing would proceed or continue or I'm have to sit down there and that seven years to find out. No, 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 no. I mean, the, the thing is that I, I would think sometime, some, somewhere before the end of the year, okay. that, that okay. may be set for their calendar. Because remember, they, they have other cases that they have to hear from other countries in the Caribbean, from countries in Asia. Um, they have other con- other cases that they have to hear. So they are the ones who set the calendar. And then okay. they notify the lawyers on both sides. Well, well, you, you have made it clear. I mean, you, you, you said better than if I did just read it off of the paper. You know, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so okay. we give thanks. We give thanks for your contribution here. And, well, you, are still you, the, and you are still the director of public prosecution. 
Yes, when last I checked, I'm still the director for it. Because I, I, I heard some squabbling going around the place that it's time you go because of your because of your age <laughs> and you know i, I went to the you gym are listening this morning to the black radar oh yes yeah. oh, i went to the gym this morning to that time that to walk in and lift a little weight something and somebody said to me boy miss lurlin what are we your age going all over the place I said, but what is a very good thing is that everybody says, well, you look much younger than what you actually are. <laughs> <laughs> I, think right. I, like to, I like to smile. Yes, right? yes. And God has been good to me in terms of my genes. And yes. I'm going to leave you with this. I tell the story all the time. A few years ago, about three, four years after I'd become BPP, maybe five years. And I'm in the superma supermarket, Muta Baruka. And a man comes up to me and says, You know, I love your smile. I'm glad to meet you, man. I see you on the TV. I'm glad to meet you. I said, Okay. Uh, you know, that's nice. Mm. So I noticed that he wasn't moving. So I looked at him now. I said, Is everything all right? He comes up to me close and look in my face and say, But what a way the stress agree with you. Right? <laughs> so. Um, God is good to me, um, yeah. and perhaps it is. I work very hard. I work long hours into the yeah. night. I go to court, um, sometimes in some really tough cases. I supervise 57 yes. lawyers at my office. Oh. They, they prosecute all over the island of Jamaica in the Court of Appeal, gone court. Um, sometimes I go to court. I'm in different parts of the island too because I, I lead from the front and I am accountable for all decisions made by yes. Cook Council in my name and on my behalf. Okay. So, and then I... Ed Cook, you the Ed Cook and Buckle Watcher. You the Ed Cook and Buckle Watcher. I'm accountable. I'm accountable to the public of Jamaica because your taxes pay my salary. Okay. But God continues to be good to me because, and I'm grateful, that yes. somehow the stress seems to agree with me. It's like that's my makeup. Yeah. <laughs> okay, give thanks, give thanks, you know. Give I give thanks all the time. So yes. I all the very best to you yes. and your listeners at yes. RFM and you have a good afternoon and take good okay. care of yourself. Give okay. Yes. Bye. That was uh, Miss Paula Llewellyn, and she's the director of public prosecution, kind of breaking it down for the listeners them about this new development in the Vibes Cartel case. Even though it's not him alone, you know, it's like it's like when them say SSL thief the money them. It's not so it's not on go bolt alone money, but because him is the main factor in it. People always call the Vibes Cartel case. So, Kaira Jones and Andre St. John. That is the case that is in question here. So, we'll be hearing more of it. As you should say, by next, by the end of this year, you might we have to call her back to hear what is going on with this case because a whole heap of people are champ on it. Whole heap of people. So, yeah, guys. <laughs> This is it, this is it, and it comes to the end of the interview within Paula Llewellyn, interviewing Vibes Cartel case. So as it is, bless up as always, and thanks for tuning in. Adios.